What's good, YouTube? It's me, your boy Squiddy, back in another Squiddio. Y'all already know. Today, I want to talk to you guys about a really, really cool concept. And huge shout out again to my buddy Anthony Aircroft, the masterful deck builder, as well as Taylor Wallace, who actually played a lot of Super Heavy Samurai, and he gave us some suggestions and tips on combos. But the fact of the matter is, Super Heavy Samurai actually combo quite well, surprisingly, with the Chimera stuff. Now, you guys think this is crazy. We're just mishmashing good cards together. But it turns out that this actually solves a couple of issues with the deck where inherently the Chimera deck traditionally will lose to cards like D-Barrier, lose to cards like Ash Blossom, get very, very punished by those cards specifically. But adding a mixture of Super Heavy Samurai cards allows you to almost circumvent that by playing synchros, pushing through your samurai plays before committing to the board with the Mirror Sword Knight. And the nice thing about the Super Heavy Samurai stuff, especially with Kaoshi, is that it actually allows you to get a one scale double pendulum so you can pendulum out the Mirror Sword Knight. So without further ado, I guess I'll show you guys the combo with having motorbike and access to your Chimera engine, which is quite easy because we play multiples of both. Gonna go effect to add the Bokaoshi, very standard kind of Bread and butter, Super Heavy Samurai plays. Gonna go and scale the Big Ben. Gonna add a copy of Soul Piercer. Gonna normal summon our Soul Piercer. Remember, we can later on commit this to the table using our Pendulum Summon to get the Chimera engine online. Gonna Synchro off to go into Stardust Excel. Nothing special here. Build the Chainlink, Chainlink 1 Dragon, Chainlink 2 Search, Chainlink 3 the Wakaoshi 2 Scale. And then from here, we are actually going to be able to add a copy of Scales. And we will bring back the motorbike, going to sink in the Baron. Baron is obviously very nice having the Omnigate out before we commit the Chimera Sword Knight to the table. So anything like Ash Blossom, we can take care of. So we're going to go ahead and Pendulum Summon out the Scales as well as the Mirror Sword Knight. Now bear in mind, this is just a two-card combo. So if you guys have any other monsters, which this mon this deck is basically all monsters, we only play two copies of Chimera Fusion. So you will have ways to extend your plays. This is just showing you guys generically with these two cards what the deck can do. So you could obviously go revive back to Soulbiercer if you do play something like a Therion King Regulus package, but in this deck, I don't think there's a lot of space. So for that purpose, instead, we're going to bring back the bike. With the bike, we're going to bring him to a level four and then synchro off into a side frame Lord Omega. Omega's effect will allow us to actually rip a card. And then from here, we're going to use the Mirror Sword Knight effect to add the Burfomet. Burfomet effect will add the Chimera Fusion, add a copy of Gazelle, and it's pretty much off to the races. We're doing our standard Chimera plays. And the nice thing about Chimera Fusion is we can always bring it back using his effect, so the Super Heavy Samurais are actually not dead. As long as we get that out of the graveyard, we will be able to follow up using another Wakaoshi or anything of the like by not having the Spell or Traps in our graveyard. So, this is really cool because end phase, what happens? Well, we get to rip one card off of the Phantom Beasts, and we already ripped another off of the Omega. And then on their turn, we get a tribute off the Mirror Sword Knight, bring out the second copy of Burfomet, and then add another copy of Fusion, as well as Gazelle for the follow-up. So this is just off two cards. Very, very cool concept here. And I'll show you guys uh, next combo here. So moving on, showing you guys the same combo. If you happen to open Wakaoshi instead of the bike, you can do a similar combo. Unfortunately, it does mean that you'll not have access to Omega. But I'll show you guys standard combo here. We're going to normal summon Piercer, adding it off of Big Ben. We're going to make Saratopi instead, and then use the Soul Piercer to add a copy of the motorbike because this is how we get the motorbike access in the graveyard. So we do have that Baron access. Motorbike's effect is going to allow us to add a copy of Soul Peacemaker, which is needed specifically for the times that we do open Wakaoshi instead of motorbike. Tributing off both to go into scales. Scales is going to bring back the bike, which will make himself level four. And then we can go off into our XL Stardust, into the Baron. From here, we pendulum summon out our dude. And then we are basically full combo minus the Omega. Because we had to use the scales, unfortunately, to ride the bike to go into the XL Stardust. And also burn the Saratobi as our second level eight in order to get access to that. But this is still quite good, especially if our opponent isn't able to disrupt. We have an Omni Negate. We have a Rip One out of their hand. On their draw phase, we can use the effect of Mirror Knight. Just add Chimera Fusion. And we have the follow-up with Chimera Fusion to make a ginormous Guardian Chimera. So yeah, pretty cool if you ask me. Let's take a look at the deck recipe. All right, now we're just going to demonstrate a quick little test solo hand to give you an idea of how this deck plays. So as you can see, this hand is... Just a, basically all engine, assuming we're going first. We're not really like seeing any Sword Knight either. We're just seeing like Gazelle and Big Wing Burfomet. But even that's still enough. Like we're just going to go ahead and get out the Fenrir here. Going to go Wakaoshi. Going to use the effect to search with Big Benkei to play around Droll. Just in case, like if we got Drolled on that, that would be a lot worse. Unfortunately, Droll is a card that's very, very annoying to deal with. Hence why hand traps have to come in handy here as a defensive option. Because we can't play spells like Book of Moon either. So 
Troll does hurt a little bit. Well, a lot, but <laughs> it's nice that we have hand traps to deal with it. We'll assume that there's no Troll to deal with at this particular moment. Going to go in the Saratobi like we demonstrated in the previous combo. Going to chain link one, two. Here, Wakaoshi going to be able to add a copy of the bike off the Soap Piercer because it's sent to the graveyard. Going to use a motorbike to add a copy of the Soap Peacemaker. Going to use the Soap Peacemaker here to equip to the Saratobi and then tribute off to bring out scales so we can bring back the motorbike and bring him to a level four. Then we're going to sync off with the tuner and the non-tuner to go into the XL to go into the Baron. From here, we are going to activate our Pendulum Summon and then summon out the Gazelle as well as the Bing Bing Burfamet. So here we're going to have access to double Chimera Fusion, which is nice because we can actually use it on our opponent's turn when we recycle it from our graveyard. Going to go ahead and just go in our typical Chimera plays now. Our board is just going to be still really, really strong. Even then we didn't have access to like Mirror Sword Knight, this is still just enough because we had the access to the Chimera regardless. So we're going to bring back the... Well, we're going to bring Kodo from our deck to the hand, have the effect delayed to discard a card in the end phase from our opponent's hand, rip one card. Going to ditch the Co-Auto to bring a copy of Mirror Sword Knight, bring back the Chimera Fusion. Now we just have double Chimera Fusion. We have Baron de Fleur. We have Fenrir. And they end phase rip a card, right? This is a lot of disruption. And then on their turn, with the five cards in hand, on top of the Baron, we have the Chimera Fusion to go into a Guardian Chimera. Guardian Chimera being able to pop a card. And then from there, because we actually ditched the Mirror Sword Knight, so we have Coato and Mirror Sword Knight on top of our Chimera. So we're very well protected. Have the Gazelle uh, search as well. And then from here, we actually have the effect of our second Chimera Fusion, which allows us to go into something like a Magnum the Reliever, which is additional disruption. So it's really, really neat how there are just layers of disruption in this deck, if, especially if you go unimpeded and being able to play a lot of hand traps and also playing so many powerful engines could be really confusing for an opponent. They don't really know what to stop, right? So just like really, really cool interactions with rogue decks like this where you're pairing a lot of powerful one-card engines and a lot of powerful non-engines. So this is sort of the deck recipe that I was working with. It's very purely theory, but look, we have a lot of space for non-engine hand traps because obviously we have to play all monsters to accommodate the super heavy samurai stuff. So we have three Ash, three Valor, three Droll, three Mourner, two Nibs. That's already a whopping heap of 14 hand traps. And then on top of that, we just have the standard samurai engine. Very, very cutting down very thin on these guys. We don't really want to draw these bricks, especially. We really just want Valkashi or Bike ideally if we can. And then just three of the main Kawato and the Sword Knight to get into our Chimera combo. Only two Gazelle and two Burfamet. One thing to note is that actually drawing Gazelle and Burfamet are not too bad in this deck because you can Pendulum some of them out and then still get access to the full combo. So in the case of Burfamet especially, it's a lot better because we just get access to both. Whereas in Gazelle, we just have access to typically the Chimera Fusion, which is still decently good enough to get access to Garden Chimera. And then also Fenrir, just because Fenrir is decent to have a monster. We have two copies of Chimera Fusion because we don't want to draw it. We just want to search it off Burfamet. And the nice thing about Chimera Fusion, again, is returning it from the graveyard using the effect. So on our follow-up turn, we actually have freed our graveyard of spells and traps, so we can actually use the Super Every Samurai combo. Side deck is fairly nice in this deck, because you can play a lot of powerful monster cards, like Bistios. We can also play Retaliating Sea in tandem with Contact Sea. A lot of purely players are actually playing Sky Striker Azalea as their only Link 2, so they do not have a generic Link 2 to get rid of Contact Sea. So this is really nice interaction. Being able to search it off Retaliating Sea is also nice. It punishes a lot of decks, including in the mirror match against Chimeras, against Branded, against Runix, so on and so forth. Radiant is quite nice because it's a fiend as well, so being able to fuse with Gazelle to go into the Chimera of the King of Phantom Beasts, on top of getting rid of a Rise Heart, which is a very annoying card for a deck like this to deal with because we only have preventative measures in the main deck to get rid of a Rise Heart, whereas if a Rise Heart sticks, it could be a little annoying to deal with, so having the Radiant, the Panker Tops, the Archfiend Eccentric as well is crucial to get rid of cards like that. Extra Dragon is fairly standard. As you can see, we're just playing like the Dispatter, XL, Crimson Dragon. You can technically go into Archfiend Dragon King Calamity as well if your hand can have a bunch of engine pieces and you go uninterrupted. So that's potentially an option with the Crimson Dragon. But in this deck specifically, you will not have protection for the King Calamity. To my knowledge, I think you actually cannot get it out with Baron. So it could be a little volatile, to be honest. You're kind of susceptible to a lot of things, things like... Uh, well, anything basically to stop the Crimson Dragon, I would say, like impermanence even sometimes would hurt. But having Omega Rip with the Dispatter, I think, is often the better play. You have access to this card as well off of the Bokaoshi by discarding to summon out the Bing K. Have Saratobi just for popping stuff and for the spells. And then Tilting Entrainment for the typical standard Samurai plays where you can bring back Bokaoshi. So 
that's about it for the combo about the deck. Um, if you guys have any ideas on how we can actually make this deck a lot better, because I realized the nice thing about these cards is, again, we're combining a lot of powerful one-card engines, and then we're playing hand traps to supplement that. So we could technically have a hand with four hand traps, and then one Wakashi or like one Kawato, one Sword Knight, and we're still going to be able to play and likely win the game if we can whittle down our opponent's resources and they have no way to actually counter our one-card combo from going through. Like, guys, we have a lot of one-card starters, okay? We have three Wakashi, three Bike, that's six we have three Kuado, that's nine we have three mirror sword knight that's 12 and then that's just on top of just like supplementary good cards like fanmer that we could just open anyways with hand traps and still survive so it's very very nice i think uh this deck definitely has a lot of cool resources cool aspects being able to put a spin on the super heavy samurai stuff because in the super heavy samurai pure deck it's a little harder to get started they don't have a lot of starters relying heavily on the motorbike and the wakaoshi instead of having access to things like kuato and mirror sword knight so yes that's about it for the video if you guys liked it definitely rate comment subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video Bye bye